welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at this, the Tinkerboard S, a new version of the Tinkerboard single board computer, which has been sent to me for review by my friends at ASUS. And I know that many of you have been waiting for some time for a new Tinkerboard and me to review the new Tinkerboard, so let's go and take a closer look. So, here we have the Tinkerboard S and its retail packaging. Nice and easy to open up, even for me. There we are, look, very straightforward. And uh, inside is the Tinkerboard S. It's uh, in there in its anti-static bag. And all underneath here, we've also got the heat sink, which will fit a bit later on, but not, not straight away. Let's look at the board itself. Get this thing out, Russell Russell. And uh, there we are, there is the Tinkerboard S, looking pretty similar, in fact, to the, the previous Tinkerboard. In fact, if I compare them for you, I'll put the uh, Tinkerboard S down there and maybe bring in the uh, original Tinkerboard. You see they're uh, looking very similar. The original Tinkerboard has got its uh, heatsink fitted here, but other than that, these boards are very similar. Different, uh, different color of screen printing on the board, but pretty much other than that, they look very similar. Highly compatible boards. Now, I'm sure you want to know about availability. This thing will be launched in April 2018, in week 15 of 2018, according to, to ASUS. And the recommended price for this in the UK is going to be £79.99, and in the US, $79.99. So this is more expensive than the previous Tinkerboard, which currently street price of about £55 or $60. So this costs more because it's got more features. And that, I think, is a good time to move on to the specification. So, here we have a Tinkerboard S in all of its detail, in all of its glory. And like its predecessor, this has got a Raspberry Pi form factor. So all the jacks, all the ports are in the same position as a Raspberry Pi. There was a 40-pin Raspberry Pi compatible GPIO connector here, colour-coded. And we've also got Raspberry Pi compatible um, display connector and camera connector. So you can use a Tinkerboard S with a great many Raspberry Pi cases and Raspberry Pi peripherals, which is clearly good. In terms of the system on the chip behind the board, the SOC, the Tinkerboard S is based on this rock chip, RK3288, which has got a quad-core ARM Cortex-A17 processor running at 1.8 GHz, and our Mali-T760 GPU running at 600 MHz. And again, to compare with the Pi, the Pi has also got a quad-core CPU, but that runs at 1.2 GHz. So this is a more powerful board in terms of its processor speed than the Raspberry Pi. In terms of memory, the Tinkerboard S has got two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, that compares with one gigabyte of DDR2 RAM on a Raspberry Pi. And the Tinkerboard S is equipped with onboard Wi-Fi and onboard Bluetooth, unlike some other single board computers I can mention, which I've reviewed here recently. If we look at the end of the board, we're in very familiar territory with four USB ports, all USB 2, sadly no USB 3 on a Tinkerboard yet, but we do have, in common with the previous version of the Tinkerboard, gigabit Ethernet and the Ethernet socket doesn't share any of its bandwidth with the USB ports. So no change here on that end, but if we look at the side of the board, we do start to find some changes. For a start, there are some improvements to the power connector. You're probably thinking, how can you improve a 5 volt micro USB power connector? And the answer is, they've given it low voltage input detection, because some people did have stability issues with the Tinkerboard if they were using a, a not entirely compliant power supply. In other words, a power supply didn't necessarily deliver exactly what it said it would, like many USB power supplies don't. So this board should now be more stable with a wider range of power supplies. And that's maybe not that exciting, but it's very important in terms of the stability of the board. They do, by the way, recommend using a 3 amp 5 volt power supply now with the Tinkerboard. Next to that, we then have the HDMI connector, and HDMI connector here, as on the previous version of the Tinkerboard, can deliver up to 4K output, which is very nice. Uh, ASUS claim them they have fixed on this board issues with H.264 and H.265 hardware decoding. That's clearly useful for media playback. And also, the HDMI connector is now HDMI CEC ready. What does that mean? It means with the right software, you can control both a Tinkerboard and a television with one remote control. So it's very clear here that ASUS are aiming the Tinkerboard more and more towards that media player market. And finally here, there are also some changes to the audio jack. And again, you're thinking, how can you change a 3.5mm audio jack? 
It's worth noting the Tinkerboard has got better audio than many other single board computers. Uh, it's got a 192kHz 24-bit audio. It has got a microphone input as well as the um, audio output on this jack. So there's no composite video from this. This is purely for audio purposes. And it has now got jack plug-in detection, which means again, with appropriate software configurations, this can actually detect what you plugged into that and switch from say HDMI audio to 3.5 millimeter audio. Again, that's quite unusual, I think, on a single board computer. Also on the audio front, on the GPIO pins, we've got an enhanced I2S pin with slave mode, but the biggest change on this board, the one I think most people will be most interested in comparing the Tinkerboard and the Tinkerboard S, is what we find when we turn the board over. And that's because under here, we find there's an additional chip. And this chip is 16 gigabytes of flash storage. So yes, we've now got onboard storage on the Tinkerboard. Now, we've also got next to it still the microSD card slot, so you can still boot this board from microSD card if you want to, but clearly it'd be more sensible to install the operating system on the 16 gigabyte EMMC. It'll be faster, it'll probably be more stable, more reliable. And if we flip the board over, as you might have noticed earlier, we have got some additional jumper pins on the board, and one of these will allow you, for example, to perform EMMC recovery. But now I think we've spent enough time looking at the hardware of the board itself, it's now time to test this thing out with an operating system. Right, to get an operating system for the Tinkerboard, you go to the ASUS uh, Single Board Computer Tinkerboard S webpage, and you go to a download, you'd probably guess that, and then we have to flick to uh, Driver and Utility. And then if we flick down here, you'll see there's various things available. We have to actually go to Others there, and then um, we also have to ask for some more things. It shows us a nice, exciting engineering drawing of it, but probably we want the operating systems. And if we go down here, you'll find there's various operating systems available. There's Android Look, there's a Tinker OS Debian. We could download these and uh, clearly use them. Now, I don't have to download that myself. As you can see, I've already downloaded loads of Tinkerboard operating systems um, pretty recently, so they're all there. So all I need to do is to plug the Tinkerboard into the PC. I'm plugged it here to my new ASUS ZenBook laptop plugged into the micro USB port, and it appears here as a drive, or technically as two drives. But if we uh, run up Etcher, and I here select one of the images to install, this is the uh, Debian image there, the TinkerOS image, and it's picked up the Linux device there, which is the Tinkerboard, and I can press flash and uh, agree to that, and it'll now start writing the operating system image to the Tinkerboard's EMMC. And so here we are booting into Tinker OS, into Debian on the Tinkerboard S. And uh, yes, we, we've arrived. Here we are on the uh, Tinker OS desktop with its nice little logo thing winking at us. And this is what you get when you first boot. I really haven't played with this at all. So this is exactly what you get when you first go into the system. And it's a very cut down version of Debian. There's no bloatware here whatsoever, which in many ways is a very good thing. You can put on this what you want. There's a few accessories, scratch, there is the Chromium web browser, some programming tools, so a few sound and video tools, system tools and preferences and stuff, but you haven't even got, for example, the, the LibreOffice uh, package installed here, so you, you can add it in. Um, let's go into Chromium, the only really big package which is installed here, to see how that works. This is completely blank. Um, let's try a, uh, putting in the world's favorite website. There we are. Oh, it, it recommended the green page, that's exciting. And that, that seems to work. We've got a good browsing experience, I think. I'm not surprised by that. The uh, previous version of a Tinkerboard was nice and responsive. And uh, this is basically the same hardware with some additions, at least the EMMC flash from which we booted. It doesn't seem quite right to have booted a Tinkerboard without an SD card in, but we have, and it works. And, and, and here we are in the operating system. Anyway, this is what you get when you first install and boot Debian on a Tinkerboard S. So, I thought we'd try booting into Android on the uh, Tinkerboard or Tinkerboard S. It's had Tinkerboard there, it's definitely the Tinkerboard S. And hopefully this will be Android in a second. Or oh, is it? Look at that, as if by magic the word Android appeared. We must be going into Android. And uh, here we are. And uh, there it is. We have this smiley Tinkerboard winky thing there again. And um, this is a fairly basic in installation of Android. It hasn't got the App Store here, unfortunately. But we've got a web browser there, which seems to uh, hopefully work. See if we can get to um, 
explaining computers. I'm pretty sure we can because I've tried this already. Yes, we can get there and we can go around. That's, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's, that's cool. And uh, we can play media. I put a video on this. My test video is there and um, I think that'll play, hopefully. Yes, with its lovely frame counter thing to show us it's all working. Good old steam engine. Nothing like having a steam engine in your test video, is there? And if we just uh, escape, we can come out of that. But clearly, um, Android might be quite useful if you want to use this as a, I keep coming out of that, as a, as a media playback device. And um, I say, other than that, there are a few other things here. There's, there's a 4K uh, video player. Um, it's good to see there's a, there's a power button. We can actually turn this thing off properly. And there's, and there's normal Android stuff around that. So I just thought we'd check out the fact we've got Android here. And let's be, let's be good. Let's close it down properly. Well, here I am back for a final time with the smiling Tinkerboard logo and again back in Debian and Tinker OS where since I saw you last I've installed Kodi and I've also copied a video across onto the machine. This is a 2160p video, what we seem to call 4K these days video. Did I click that? No, I didn't. And um, this is, is set to play in Kodi and uh, it works very well. Um, I'm impressed with Kodi on my Tinkerboard. I've been impressed with Kodi on my Tinkerboard in the past. Didn't work early on with the Tinkerboard, but in, in more recent months, it's been working very well, very nice implementation. And indeed, if I stop this, uh, I'm impressed with this. This is a very, very nice uh, Kodi implementation. If you want to use the Tinkerboard as a media playback device, this is certainly something you'll want to investigate. In February 2017, I made my first video about the original Tinkerboard. And since that time, the software for the Tinkerboard has improved significantly, and now we've also got some new hardware. Now, admittedly, the Tinkerboard S is not that far removed from the Tinkerboard. In many ways, that's a good thing. It means the boards are absolutely compatible. And it is nice to see things like the 16 gigabytes of onboard flash storage, and the attempts to make power more stable and to make the board even more suited as a media playback device. However, I think the really important thing about the Tinkerboard S is the fact it has been launched, the fact there is a second generation of the board. It really makes it clear that ASUS is committed to the Tinkerboard platform. And that is a good thing for both the Tinkerboard and for Singapore computers more generally. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.